Good morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought I'd do this morning is walk you through the simplest process I know for reloading shotgun shells in the field or at home. And I've set up a shotgun reloading kit from simple common items. We'll talk about them a little at a time. Then I'm going to go through a full sequence of loading an empty shell up to shooting that shell in this video. Stay with me. Okay. Real simple, rubber mallet, a dollar. Pretty cheap to buy, easy to find at yard sales, rummage sales, things like that. But you don't want to be hitting this stuff with a hard mallet. A wood mallet or a leather mallet work fine. You don't really want to use a hammer on this stuff because you want a little bit of an easy touch. Two bottles I have here. One of them is full of number six shot. One of them is full of Pyrodex RS, rifle shotgun. You can get this stuff for about $12 a pound at Walmart. Six shot, I usually buy in 50 pound bags. It's easier to buy shot and mold round ball from the shot as you need it than it's ever gonna be to make the shot. So I just buy the shot, mold the round balls from that for my shotgun. Now, as far as the reloading kit goes, I've got it in an old wooden cigar box here. I have a pouch full of sheep's wool. This is my wad. I've got a few shells in here. I'll get them out of the way. The reloading kit is very simple. You need an anvil, a piece of flat metal that you can pound against. This is just a piece of flat metal stock. You need some type of a device that will allow the primer to be punched from the shell and give you room for that punch to travel. And this is just a copper spacer from a hardware store. It sits on top of the anvil. Now I can put the shell on top of that and punch out a spent primer. The punch that I use is just an old metal punch that's been reprofiled on the front that goes down straight over top of that primer and pushes that primer out onto the handle. Once you get that taken care of, you've inspected your brass and all that stuff to make sure it's still good. Once you get the shell unprimed, now you have to reprime it. <laughs> what I generally do is seat those primers in by hand. I have a box here of 209 shotgun primers. I seat them by hand first, and then what I'll do is I'll remove this from the anvil, and I have a piece of pipe here that has been ground down so it's smooth, and it's probably a quarter inch ID. And it just has to be big enough that it will fit over the top with some room of one of these primers. Because once you seat that primer up into the shell, you want to seat this on top of the primer and hit it to seat the primer. Okay, that's the easiest way to do it on the cheap. Now you can also find sometimes these antique devices that are made for seating primer so that once you seat that primer in, you can put this shell into this vise and it has a knob right here that sets against the primer and you squeeze it to seat that primer. Either way will work fine. This costs a few bucks. This costs very little or almost nothing. Once you get that primer seated in there, now you're ready to load the shell. I have a dipper here. This is an antique dipper that has graduations on it in drams that can be adjusted for volume of shot and volume of powder. I use an equal shot of volume, an equal volume of shot to powder. That way there's no muss, no fuss. Generally, I'll leave it closed all the way on this dipper. I also have a copper powder measure that I use. If I am muzzle loading my shotgun here and it's a little bit smaller in diameter but it's a little bit longer so I use this in the field I use this when I'm loading in a tent or at home I fill this up with powder first and dump it in once you have your powder in the shell you're going to put some type of wad in there and I just use regular sheep's wool for wadding and you'll get used to how much of it you need to stuff down in there depending on the load that you're building, how much powder and how much shot you're using. Then I take just a piece of dowel rod and I use that as my tamper to get everything seated to the bottom. Now you can also use an over powder card and an over shot card. I generally don't use an over powder card. I only use an over shot card at the end over the top of my last wadding. We'll talk about that or show that in the loading sequence. So now I have this thing with shot, excuse me, with powder 
and I have my wad. Now I'm going to fill this dipper up with shot and pour that in. And then I'm going to use enough wadding to bring that after it's tamped down to almost about an eighth of an inch below the bottom of the shell. And I've trimmed the crimp off the shell on purpose because I'm not going to recrimp the shell. And once I get that in, I'll put an overshot card in here. And this is just cut with a regular leather circle 5 8 punch. All right, 5 8 is a little less than 3 quarters, 12 gauge is a little less than 3 quarters. I'll put that on top and it fits tight. I'll push it down in there, tamp it down to where it's about an eighth of an inch below the surface. I'll take a hot melt glue stick, these things are about a dime a piece, and I'll heat it up to where it's good and hot and melting, and then I'll just run it around the inside of the rim to glue temporarily that overshot card, an overwad card, to the shell itself, and then it's ready to fire.
Okay guys, well I appreciate you joining me today for this quick video on a simple reloading kit and how to reload a shotgun shell for the 12 gauge shotgun with common materials. And this entire kit, even with the price of the antique dipper and the antique primer tool, was probably less than $20 or right at $20 at flea market prices. If you just forego those two items and use a piece of copper tubing as a measure, like I do for muzzle loading, and just use a piece of pipe to set your primer on the anvil like I showed earlier, you probably would have well under five, six bucks in this kit. And then you'd have to buy your shot and your powder, but that stuff is fairly inexpensive. Now I use sheep's wool for my wadding, and I always use sheep's wool for reloading shells and for muzzle loading. And the reason I do that is because number one, it's cheap. You can get that sheared wool, the waste wool off the shearing process, by the bag from any trapping supply house. We even sell it on our website. And it's very cheap for a huge bag of it that will last you for a long time. Sheep's wool has lanolin in it, so it's going to lubricate the barrel and make it easier to clean. It's fire retardant, so it's not going to come out of the end of the barrel on fire. And it's not made out of plastic, so it's biodegradable. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business. Follow our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.